Hi there, I'm Miss Osuna, and today we're going to render antique gold taffeta. You want to start off by having a croquis already on your marker paper, and then you want to lightly take away some of the lead. So that's what I'm doing here is just using my kneaded eraser to remove some of the lead so that it does not muddy up the sketch when we put the marker on top of it. So here you can see it's very light, but that's going to be very, very helpful in creating a really beautiful final product. This is the croquis that I've used underneath the dress. So we're walking and the leg on the right side of the sketch is forward. The leg on the left side of the sketch is behind. But of course you can use any croquis you have. I'm going to start off with the second lightest yellow that I have. We're going to use several shades of yellow and then add caramel color and add our shadows with a very dark gray and then even black. So here this is my second lightest color, but you can definitely use whatever colors you have available to you. This particular color is called yellow orange. And like I said, that's the second lightest color that I have. I'm gonna add the brighter yellow on top of it after I do this particular layer first. The reason that I've chosen to add the second lightest color first is because the lightest color is a little too bright for my eye to use as the first set of shadows. So I'm shadowing under the bust, I'm shadowing on the shadow side, and then I am filling in gathers, and of course that hemline and the edge of the sleeve and the shoulder. Now I'm gonna go to that lighter color, and that is canary yellow. But once again, you can do this with whatever tones you happen to have. Don't let the colors stop you. Play around and try to get a really good mix with whatever colors of marker you happen to have. So notice on the shadow side, it's much darker and there's barely any color on the light side. So I'm just gonna gradually fill in that light side mostly with that lighter color. Starting off with that shadow color is very helpful for me so that I can really see where I am putting my highlights. Now I'm moving into my caramel color. This is an E23 and many times you're gonna find markers from different makers. So my markers are all different, but I can use them together just by blending and layering one on top of the other. So this is an E23 marker, totally different brand from the last marker that you saw, but it definitely can work because it's really not so much about the markers themselves as it is about your ability to blend one color to the next. So take note that I'm putting my shadows under the bust and I'm putting on the shadow side of the sleeve, but I leave a little bit of white space above the bust just to get started. I'm gonna be filling in these shadows and taking away white spaces you can see some white spaces in between the gathers, but to start, remember we always wanna add a little bit of color at a time. So this dress is going to be shot with a light source toward the center. So that's gonna be the brightest colors, but our deepest shadow tones will be on the left side of the sketch. So here I'm gonna go in now with a chocolate brown. And once again, I am adding more shadows, starting always on that shadow side. 
So one of the reasons you need to memorize a technique and try to use it over and over again in the same way is because as a fashion designer, you don't have the luxury of spending many hours on one sketch. So you're spending your time purchasing fabric, working on the collection, working on the tech pack, and of course, working with the people on your team. You will not be spending most of your time sitting and sketching. Certainly not to the extent that we are doing. These sketches are more for sales purposes and to help you get a job, so for your portfolio. But as a working fashion design assistant and then eventually a designer, you will not be sitting and spending a lot of time rendering fabrics. Now I'm going in with warm gray six. So I'm adding more shadow and I'm using warm gray six. So the warm tones of our grays have a reddish undertone as opposed to the cool tones of our grays. Those have a more blue undertone. So the reddish undertone matches better with my antique gold in result. So once again, this particular color is called Warm Gray 6, but any gray that you have, as long as it doesn't feel blue as a base, would be fine. And if you just don't happen to have a marker that is a warm gray tone, then you can try to use your colored pencil in the warm gray tone. Next, I'm gonna go one shade darker, and this particular gray is a whole different brand, like I said, but it is one shade darker, and the only way you can tell, honestly, what colors your markers are, are by going into the art supply store of your choice and actually testing the marker on a piece of paper. So my recommendation is that you would make a key, K-E-Y, and your key is just a piece of paper that has a scribble of all the marker colors you have and a scribble uh, next to the name of that color. Sometimes the names are just numbers and sometimes they're actual names. So that way, if you take that key with you and you go into an art supply store with that key, you can hold that up and those are the markers that you already own and then test the new markers so that you can see if the colors are close enough to blend. So now here I'm just blending these down with a colorless blender. And you will probably need to buy several colorless blenders or buy the refill for a colorless blender. There is refill ink for it and it's not ink as in color, it's really kind of an alcohol clear formula. Some people have even made their own refill liquid for their um, colorless blenders. And one way that you can do that is by using a combination of distilled water, glycerin, and alcohol. Of course, you can research that online. There are different formulas available. But the point is that you need a really good colorless blender to blend all your colors. So if your blender is a little dry, it will not work. 
Now I'm going to go back to the canary yellow. I'm cleaning it off on my scratch paper first and I'm going to go on top of all these layers so that it can start to have a very blended feeling. More so than what the colorless blender can do. This canary yellow on top of all of those deep caramel tones and chocolate tones and gray is really going to make it start to feel very warm and give that gold antique reflective feeling. Now let's move on and add some black colored pencil and of course that's for the shadows. I'm sharpening my pencil here and you want to make sure of course that you keep your pencil sharp for something like this because now we're moving to a yellow colored pencil and that's going to be in the light source mostly from that front area like I mentioned this dress is going to be shot from the front even though I still do have a very clear shadow that's larger on the left side. And now, once I finish with that yellow, it's a very bright yellow. It's also a canary yellow um, specifically, but uh, once I finish with that, I'm gonna move on to some white in the center for my colored pencil. And that goes right on top. Now I'm pulling out some terracotta tones with my colored pencil and that's for our shadows. And now I'm gonna go back in with black, once again, colored pencil. And as I'm working these shadows, I'm following these fold lines because now I'm gonna start to bring in some of those details of our folds. So here with white colored pencil, I'm going to begin to define the folds. And some of these folds are coming from the far left side and going all the way to the far right side. Some are not going to connect all the way. So with a sort of a smile shape upward from the right side of the sketch, that's where I'm beginning and I'm just aiming toward the left side of the sketch 
it's almost as if you can imagine all of the folds coming from one single point now underneath those folds and on top of those folds I'm gonna go in with black for a shadow so that shadow is going to sit right on top of that smile shape and then for more detail we're going to add more shadow Now I have peach colored pencil and I'm going to use that to soften some of the tones that we've already put in with our white. And notice this is going to now connect from the far left side of our hip to the far right side of our hip. Now for highlights, we're going to move into white ink gel. So that's going to start from the right side of the sketch. And remember, we're making smile shapes over towards the left. This will just pull out some nice highlights on the folds that are on the right side of the sketch. These highlights are very soft, so I'm not pushing too hard. And you might notice that you're gel pen has a hard time working sometimes on top of your colored pencil so just make sure that you scribble it on the scratch page to get it to work and then it will be just fine you might have to try it two or three times I'm also going to put a little bit of this white above the bust uh, and down the center for reflective light this is a preference how much light you want and then I'm just taking my finger and smudging so that those highlights can now start to blend in. Now let's layer with the bright canary yellow marker. And once again, keep scratch paper so that you can clean your markers off because when you're putting a lighter color on top of a darker color, the marker can be dirty so always test it on a scratch paper before putting it onto your sketch.
So now I'm moving into a sand color. And that sand color is very, very light, but again, it allows me to soften some of those whites, but still have it show through. I'm gonna add just a bit more yellow colored pencil over on my shadow side so that we can see that reflective light. Because when you have a taffeta that's an antique gold color, it bends and changes in the light. So it seems that there are deeper darks in the shadows, but those shadows have different levels of intensity. And then there are brighter brights where the light source is but once again there's also different levels of intensity taffeta is a more crunchy stiff fabric and so it is very nice to look at in the lighting because it can hold very deep deep shadows so here i'm just going to add a bit and you more can see now we are almost done with our tutorial from the right side of the sketch over to the left and once again you always want to do it gently when you're adding a deeper tone and then gradually increase the intensity. So here, for a final touch, I am just going to soften those darker shadows that I've just created with a peach colored pencil. And that will do it for this tutorial. I'm super excited to see your work and what you have been up to. Remember, you can always reach me anytime on Instagram at Coriosuna. And I'd love to see a picture of your work, so feel free to send me a message with a picture. All right, until we meet again in the next video, please, please continue practicing your sketching. <laughs>